Uh, tomorrow's opening school year mass at the Catholic University of America will feature a centuries-old artifact. The annual mass of the Holy Spirit will include a chalice from the 15th century. The silver gilt artifact is a rare survivor of the Protestant Reformation. Tomorrow marks one of the first times in centuries that the chalice will be used in a liturgy. And joining us now is Catholic University's chaplain, Father Aquinas Gilbo. Father Aquinas, thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate it. Um, what more can you tell us about the history of this chalice? And also, how did the opportunity come about for it to be used tomorrow? Well, it's a remarkable piece of religious art and uh, just a piece that's important to the history of the church. Art historians date the chalice to about 1480. That's their best guess. And we suspect that the chalice was used by a religious community in or around Cork in the south of Ireland uh, for a few decades before the arrival of English forces who were aiming to suppress the practice of the faith in Ireland at that time. We don't know exactly what happened to the chalice, whether it was stolen or looted. Maybe it was buried for safekeeping, but it disappeared for centuries. In 1930, it turned up in an auction in England uh, a collector of silver purchased it, and about 100 years later, the grandson of the man who bought that chalice in 1930 found it in his grandfather's garden in a shed in the backyard, basically, in a cardboard box, and, and he called an auction house. And a couple of years ago, the chalice was purchased by an Irish businessman who very generously has uh, kind of put the chalice on a, on a tour around the United States, and the Catholic University of America is, is thrilled to be able to host it. That's really fascinating. I understand that Mass will be celebrated by Bishop Michael Burbage from the Diocese of Arlington, right. Virginia. Um, that said, um, is it unusual, you know, for such a rare artifact to be included in Mass? And, and also, I'm curious, um, what did you think when you found out that the, ch that the chalice, that is, would be making its way to CUA? Well, it is rare that uh, this kind of chalice, especially dating from uh, the 15th century, from Ireland. Uh, my understanding is that there aren't many that have survived history, that haven't survived the Irish and, and English Reformation. A lot of chalices that were made in the 15th century or before the Reformation were, again, either stolen, looted, buried, probably never to be seen again. Uh, many were also simply melted and their, their precious metals used for other purposes. So there are only a handful uh, of chalices uh, dating from this period that that are continued to to be used at mass. Um, I just began as chaplain at Catholic University this summer. One of the first emails I received was from the university administration asking, "Hey, we've we've received this uh, this offer from from the owner of the chalice. Is Catholic uh, interested in in hosting the chalice for a few months?" And the first email I wrote back to the the president was to say, uh, "Absolutely, there's no question here. We'd be happy to to have it, and we're going to use it then tomorrow." at uh, the university's open mass, opening mass, the Mass of the Holy Spirit. That's so wonderful. Do you know uh, where the chalice will go next after mass tomorrow? So uh, it will be on display here at the Catholic University for another couple of months. Uh, and uh, the owner of the chalice has plans for it to travel to Boston for a stay there for some time and then to Albany uh, for uh, another part of the, the tour and then eventually back to Ireland where uh, art historians and, and those who are, are really expert in pre-Reformation, late medieval uh, Irish metalworker are going to take the chalice and study it and hopefully unlock a lot of the secrets and a lot of the, the historical de details that, that simply remain uh, unknown at this point. Father, we don't have a whole lot of time left, but before I let you go, mm -hmm. uh, I'm wondering, as we approach this new, new school year, you know, not just for Catholic University, but for students really all over the world, um, what advice do you have for them entering this new school year? I would say entrust themselves first to the Holy Spirit, plead for the Spirit's inspiration, pray for the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the, especially the gifts of wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, and also entrust themselves to the prayer of Our Lady. Uh, the Holy Spirit, Our Lady, you know, inspiration from God, uh, the protection of our, our, our Blessed Mother. Uh, yeah, I don't think any student anywhere can go wrong with, uh, with that kind of prayer. Yeah, not at all. Well, Father Aquinas, thank you so much for your time today. God bless you. Thank you. God bless.